السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Suicide is real. Sometimes people have dark thoughts. Sometimes people think about hurting themselves. Some people think about killing themselves. And this is often a a taboo topic, but we we have to talk about it. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the companions they spoke about it. On an occasion, some of them they went to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, stating that sometimes we find something in ourselves, thoughts, that it will be better for us to fall from the sky than for us to speak with what we find in ourselves. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, "Is this what you're finding inside of yourself?" For that, Kasirihu Iman, that is the epitome of faith. For Satan strives to get you to fall, and when he is unable to do so, then he begins attacking you. So the fact that you realize that there's something wrong, the fact that you realize that these type of thoughts are unhealthy, the fact that you you, you fight it, the fact that you know it's unbecoming, this is a step to take, seeking out help, seeking out rectification, and. The fact that you 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 struggle with this and you don't want to do something that is is wrong is a sign that you actually do have faith. And just so that you understand that we're not just shooting from the hip here. Um, in a different life, I was a a suicide counselor, uh, trained and certified. We need to understand. The stages of suicide. There is ideation, there's planning, and then there's decision. We'll speak about these briefly. In the phase of ideation, a person may start thinking about harming themselves or killing themselves. A person may begin to fantasize about it, and believe it or not, it's not necessarily abnormal for any one of us to have thought about it once, twice, or thrice. At some point throughout our lives, but sometimes these thoughts become more deeply seated, and it grows because people are hurting, people are tired, people don't want to do life anymore, people are facing a challenge that they don't know how they're going to get past it, and it begins to develop into a plan, and a plan is where. You begin to put together. Well, if you were to do this, how would you do it? Where would it be? What would you use? What type of time of day would it be? These type of things. You start putting together a plan. And what about uh, other people? And how will I work around this? And how will I work around that? How can I get to this? And then this graduates into decision. And at the point of decision, this is the epitome of the danger zone, because once the decision is made, it then can enter into our subconscious. People enter into a phase that's called autopilot, and at this point, the person that was depressed or was was down or whatever it was, there may be a calming that suddenly comes over this person, and even at time.、Um, Therapists can be deceived by this this phase of autopilot, where where the person seemingly comes out of it and things are okay. No, the person is only okay because they've decided to not deal with life anymore. That's why, and you may see an uptick in their happiness or whatever have you, and the person may begin saying goodbye,、uh, wrapping certain things up. We have to be conscious. So, if you happen to come across a person that is struggling with this, then there are certain things that you can do to 
help and to support. The first thing that you do is you ask. Then you establish safety. Then you get help. And then you follow up. So let's talk about it. You ask. And this is a tough question to ask. It's an odd question to ask. But you have to ask it. Are you thinking about killing yourself? And studies show that asking this question doesn't uh, push a person more so toward suicide if they haven't already decided on it. So you have to ask the question. Then you attempt to get the person safe. And this may mean removing things from them that can harm themselves and you have to change your thinking to what can be harmful to this person and not necessarily what appears to be a weapon. Because there are many other things that are utilized that we have uh, in our households and around us on an everyday basis. Um, Maybe it's a razor. Maybe it's pills. Maybe it's something different. Um, Maybe it's some some form of of something that you can tie yourself with, right? Um, Different things. You get the person safe. Talk to the person about their story. And when you start talking to the person, you have to listen and listen very, very well. This is about them, not about you. Listen to how they got to where they are. Listen to their life story. Listen to what's going on with them. And in this space, you're going to eventually hear them divulge two things. One thing will be the reason as to why they got to this particular point. And the second thing you're going to hear is a reason why they want to live. And it's very, very important. So you walk them through this. You utilize their reason to live to convince them to to back down or suggest to them to back down, attempt to get the agreement from them to, to back down from this act. And if you can utilize that reason to live to get them to back down from this act, then you put a plan in place with this person in order to keep them safe. Even if it's something just for the moment, even if it's something just for the night, find something that they do enjoy doing. What do they like about life? And get them doing that. And there are also hotlines that you can call. There's a national suicide hotline. It's 1-800-273-TALK. And if for some reason uh, that's too much, then you can always dial 311 in wherever you are in the United States of America. And you'll be plugged in to a center where you will end up with a counselor that can assist you um, or your loved one through these, these troubling times. And after that, then you follow up. Follow up with them. Check on them. And you may need to repeat this process again. And understand that the power in this situation lies with the person who is troubled, not with you. The decision to make suicide is just that it's a decision that rests with the person. No one can make someone not do it. So we have to empower people to make the proper decisions. And we should also understand that ultimately the person who enters into this act, that this person is under the will of Allah. Many have the misnomer that one who does this act will definitively be punished in hell. Some think eternally. And that may be the case for some, but not all. It is under the will of Allah. We offer you this in closing. The notable companion, Tufayl ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with him. He made the hijrah to Medina, along with a friend of his who also made hijrah to Medina. The migration, the immigration into the prophetic city of El Medina. And this companion had fallen ill, not to fail, but his friend had fallen ill. And it was too much for him. He just couldn't take it. 
couldn't deal with it. So he slid his he slid his wrist, and he died. May I be pleased with all the companions. So Theo had a dream about him, and in a dream, he saw him in a good state. He was doing well, and it was just that his hands were covered. So Tufail asked him about this in his dream. And his friend told him that which we have corrupted and disfigured would not be rectified. Tufail then goes and makes mention of this dream of his to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supplicates for him and he states, Allahumma wali yadehi faghfir. O Allah, for him and for his two hands, forgive him. Collect your thoughts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.